Hello and welcome to Pseudocode. In today's video, we will learn about the third principle of solid, which is called Liskov substitution principle. It is named after a famous computer scientist and a Turing Award winner. Uh, the details of the scientist is linked in the description. You can check it out. Before watching this video, I would recommend you to watch the inheritance and polymorphism video first if you have not watched it or if you do not have proper understanding of inheritance. If you do, however, understand inheritance properly, then you can stay in this video and learn about the Liskov substitution principle. So let's get started. Liskov substitution principle, the actual definition looks something like this, which basically suggests that you should be able to replace the actual class instance by the subclass instance. Now, it might sound non-intuitive at first, but let's first understand why this principle exists in the first place. This principle exists so that you can understand how to inherit properly. Basically, since object-oriented techniques are abstract in nature and you want to abstract the real world and represent it in terms of classes and objects, it is highly possible that you write code in a way that it works it serves the business requirements, but still conceptually it might be wrong. So that you don't make such mistakes and so that you understand that conceptually you have done things right, there are some principles in place and this principle is one of them, which actually tells you that if you have done inheritance in a wrong way, basically if you have designed your classes, parent and child classes in a way, which is correct, this principle will, will not be violated. But if the, inherit, if the way you have inherited the classes is wrong, this principle will be violated and you will get to know that you have done something wrong with the way you have inherited the classes. And also, when I was studying about this principle, it seemed very difficult to me. But once I understood it, now I feel that it is very difficult to forget it. So that, will, uh, ex that exactly would happen to you as well. If you understand it from the code, even even once it will be very easy for you to figure out if any source code is violating this principle and it will also become very natural and intuitive for you to design classes in a way that this principle is always followed let's take a real world example first let me try to define uh, or describe the principle in simple words first if a function takes an instance of a class that same function should also be able to take the instance of derived class from that class. For example, there is a function x, it takes instance, let's say, of a class C. Now, class C has derived classes C1 and C2. This function x should also be able to take the derived class instances, instances of C1 and C2, and the functionality of this function x should not break at all. Let's understand this using an example. Let's say we have a class menu item, which describes the different items in a menu. And in this class, we have a function get price, which returns us the price of that particular item. Now, let's say that there are uh, some discounts that are being offered on only on beverage items, not the solid food items. So what would you do? You can derive a class beverage item from the class menu item and you can write a function in that beverage item class and you can call that function as get price with discount. Now the problem is whoever is calling this code on menu item dot get price. If they are calling menu item dot get price, their code will not break. But if they have passed the instance of beverage item, then they would have to call beverage item dot get price with discount. Now first this will break the principle because you are not able to substitute the beverage item instead of the menu item because now you have to change the way you call the function. So this is a violation of Liskov substitution principle. You should not be you should be able to follow the same functionality without the way you are uh, without changing the way you are calling the functions. Now this leads us to a hint that we should have a function get price in the beverage item class which actually calculates the discount. This seems very straightforward. Now in beverage item class we will have a function get price and inside that function we can have the discount calculation now again the problem with this principle problem with this implementation is tomorrow if there is a discount introduced in menu item class then how we are going to handle it so in order to handle this what we are going to do is in the get price function of menu item class we will call a private function get discount we will define that private function in menu item class and we will override that function get discount in beverage item class. In beverage item class, we can return the 10% discount that has to be applied on all the beverage items 
in the menu item class we will just leave that function as it is and return zero now menu item has get price which calls internally apply discount uh, beverage item has function get price which internally calls get discount so no matter you call get price on the instance of beverage item or you call get price on the instance of menu item you will get the corresponding discount that any of the item provides or not provides or or basically you get the respective discount if it has been applied on any of the items so this is how you correctly follow the list of substitution principle where you don't have to change the client code when i say client code that means you don't have to change the code which is dealing with the instances of menu items and beverage items another simpler way of doing this is if you don't want to complicate it just let the functions get price uh, be available in both the classes in the implementation of get price in beverage item class you can just do the discount calculation that would also not violate the list of substitution principle if i talk about a simpler example then let's take uh, go back to the example that we have used in inheritance you have a shape class a rectangle class and square class extend from shape class let's say we extend square class from rectangle class instead of shape class so now square class becomes the child of rectangle and rectangle class is the child of shape class when we talk about area the way area of rectangle is calculated is length into breadth and the way area of square is calculated is side into side now you see since we have inherited square from the rectangle in the constructor of the square we have to make a work around where you have to call the constructor of rectangle with s and then you have to set length as s and width as s this seems okay this seems logical but the problem is any time you are going to do any operation on square or rectangle you have to be very mindful about uh, square basically mocking the behavior of rectangle and hence this is actually violating the principle of uh, list of substitution because the inheritance done here is not correct if instead you would have inherited square from the shape class itself square can have its own area implementation rectangle can have its own area implementation and the client code which is calling the instance of either shape class or rectangle class or square class is actually able to call get area without worrying about what is happening inside also the function which is accepting the instance of shape class even if you pass the instance of rectangle or square class to it it will not impact the existing functionality and it will not uh, break the existing code so this is how you figure out if any particular code is breaking the list of substitution principle as a thumb rule you can do two things first check if the inheritance of classes is done in a proper manner all the classes that that are inherited just try and ask yourself is this child class really is a type of the parent class or really is a parent class that is the first hint to figure out if this uh, if this uh, principle is being broken and second question always try to replace the instances of parent class with the child class and see if it breaks any underlying functionality if it breaks that means the list of substitution principle is not being followed so this was a brief idea of list of substitution principle again i have included a lot of links a lot of links to different books which describe this principle using real world examples as well as uh, small examples like rectangle squares etc let me know if anything was confusing about this example and let me know if uh, you have any doubts with respect to the explanation that i have just given as an exercise what you can do is just think about a parking lot example and try to figure out what are the different ways in which this principle can be violated while designing the classes for a parking lot try to give your answer in the comments and i will try to address them uh, as much as i can in the next video we are going to talk about interface segregation principle till then take care see you in the next video